Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Innovation Guelph Presents Toolkit Tuesday. I'm going to give it about 30 seconds and then we will get started with today's presentation. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Innovation Guelph Presents Toolkit Tuesday. My name is Adelaide Manley, Program Manager for Innovation Guelph Startup Program, and I'm super excited to be here hosting this call with you today. I'd first like to welcome our two friendly American Sign Language interpreters, whose time today is graciously provided in kind by Sign Language Interpreting Associates of Ottawa, Anna and Kelly. Thank you both for joining us, and thank you to SLEO. While I'm at it, I'd also like to thank our corporate sponsors, Ernst & Young, Reese Informatica, Invest in Guelph, and BDO. We're very grateful for their support. Before beginning the session today, I would like to give recognition to the land that Guelph is on. We acknowledge that many others here today may be on a different territory, so we invite and encourage each of you to give recognition to the land that you occupy today and every day. As we gather for today's event, we are reminded that Guelph is situated on treaty land that is steeped in rich Indigenous history and home to many First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people today. As a city, we have a responsibility for the stewardship of the land on which we live and work. Today, we acknowledge the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation of the Anishinaabek peoples on whose traditional territory we are meeting. Today's webinar is called Demystifying Government Relations for Entrepreneurs with Natasha Hope Morano, President of NHM Connect and the Corporate and Government Affairs Director for Startup Canada. In case some of you are new to Innovation Guelph, a quick background on us. So Innovation Guelph is one of 17 regional innovation centers in Ontario. And while we are located in Guelph, we serve the entire region of Southern Ontario and have one national program. This means that while most of our clients are relatively close by, we do have clients in BC, British Columbia, all the way to Nova Scotia, and throughout Ontario. We work with our clients, supporting them throughout multiple stages of business growth from startup to scale up with lots of programs, workshops, networking opportunities, and even a trade show called the Ontario Innovation Expo. But now I'd like to move on to introducing our presenter for today. And just a quick note, should you have any questions for our facilitator today, please do use the Q&A feature. We will monitor and ask your questions when the time is right. And at the end, we will also have dedicated and organized question and, a question and answer period. So in, to introduce our facilitator, Natasha Hope Morano is the president of NHM Connect, an Ottawa-based consultancy company specializing in strategic partnerships and corporate and government relations. As former vice president of the Economic Club of Canada and having opened the first satellite chapter of the club in Ottawa, she has had the privilege of hosting some of the world's most notable influencers and thought leaders. Natasha has a passion for supporting causes that advance children's rights and the well-being of those underserved. In 2019, she was selected by the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs to attend the first Canadian Women's Leaders Mission to Israel and has completed her master's degree in political science. In addition to running NHM Connect, Natasha currently serves as the Corporate and Government Affairs Director for Startup Canada. Natasha, I will hand the virtual screen over to you. Thank you so much, Adelaide, and thank you to Anna and Kelly for providing the interpretation today. Welcome, everyone. If you can just bear with me for one second, I am going to share my screen, and we are going to get this party started. All right, I think we are good to go here. <clears throat> Great. Well, good afternoon and welcome. Uh, as Adelaide had mentioned, my name is Natasha Hope Morano, and to begin, I would like to acknowledge the land on which I am on today it is located on the unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabeg Nation. 
I also acknowledge with respect the diverse histories and cultures of all Indigenous peoples in this country. Thank you to everyone who has tuned in today to learn more about GR, otherwise known as Government Relations. It is my goal uh, by the end of this presentation that each of you realize you don't need to be an expert at GR to do GR. Now, to set the stage, I would like to quickly share a little bit about me and how my entrepreneurship journey began. I am the former vice president, as you saw from my bio, of the Economic Club of Canada, and I have hosted heads of states and throughout my tenure made some incredible connections, so much so that I was nominated for Businesswoman of the Year. Now, the same night of the gala, uh, my greatest fear came true. My mom was diagnosed with cancer. I left the club to become her caregiver and advocate, and through this tumultuous journey of getting her into a study, which ultimately saved her life, my entrepreneurial inner voice was becoming stronger and stronger. I realized that I needed to be the master of my own destiny, because to me, that is what entrepreneurship is rooted in. I have so many great connections in the political arena and ends with political players and C-suite executives, I decided to build a company around leveraging these connections and started NHM Connect. My company specializes in corporate and government affairs and deeply rooted in that is the power of strategic partnerships. Now, as I grow my company, I gravitate towards the following causes. Anything that has to do with entrepreneurs and startups, youth empowerment, cancer research, and international relations. I am also the director and corporate uh, government affairs director at Startup Canada. And through my work at Startup Canada, I have had the privilege to work with Innovation Guelph. And I think the team at Innovation Guelph can attest to just how passionate I am about trying to create connections for entrepreneurs in this complex political arena that we call GR. And that's why part of my business structure is giving back. And on a monthly basis, I like to work and mentor with mentor entrepreneurs in trying to help them navigate this complex web and connect them with government officials. To me, this is my favorite part of the job. So that's why I am super pumped for this presentation today. Now, before I launch my first official slide, I would like to take a moment to pay respect to the late Jim Carr. He was a fantastic member of parliament, a huge champion of individuals approaching him, sharing their concerns, their recommendations, and their feedback back. And unfortunately, he did pass away. So if you could join me in bowing your head to pay respect to the fantastic Jim Carr, I would deeply appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining me and paying respect to Jim Carr. So today we are going to be talking about government relations and this complex landscape. Now, the reality is for most entrepreneurs, you do not have the time to add another item to your growing to-do list and learning the ropes of lobbying is certainly not a priority. But grasping the general workings of the political landscape and government relations can benefit you both in the immediate and long term. Like it or not, government is in your business already, and not just because of taxations. The government sets standards, regulations, oversight of pretty well every industry. And so learning how to work with them and treating them as an advocate will really only help your business today and in the future. Now, in order to analyze government relations, you need to understand the DNA of the political landscape. So the key players within the political landscape include members of parliament, ministers, parliamentary secretaries, senators, staffers, public servants, journalists, pollsters, think tanks, NGOs, public affair firms, and lobbyists such as myself. Now, because we don't have too much time today, about, I'd say we're at about 80 minutes now, uh, we're going to focus our uh, main objective on looking at members of parliament and lobbyists. But as you can see, there are a lot of key players in this space, and uh, hopefully I'll have the opportunity to, uh, to do another webinar with all of you and we can hone in on perhaps ministers or parliamentary secretaries. But MPs are where we're going to focus our efforts today. Now, in order to understand how to navigate the uh, government relations space, you need to understand what a lobbyist is and what they do. And I'm sure you've heard this term, lobbyist, lobbyist, lobbyist. But what a lobbyist does is they are paid by somebody 
uh, that could be an employer or a client to communicate directly, both in writing and orally, uh, with a federal official. And the goal of a lobbyist is really to inform and influence the outcome of decision making. So this can range from bills, policies, programs, awarding of contracts and grants, really trying to champion a cause. So a fun fact about me is that you can almost think of me as the official liaison, speaking both government speak and entrepreneur speak, really trying to connect the dots and create trust within the government space so they know that when I bring a recommendation or a suggestion or a topic to them, it's well respected and worthwhile for them to actually engage with me to understand how we can potentially move the needle on a particular topic. Who we lobby. So lobbyists tend to uh, officially lobby designated public offers hold office holders. So this includes the prime minister, ministers, their staff, members of the House of Commons, so MPs, members of the Senate, deputy ministers, assistant deputy ministers, and equivalents. So to the right of your screen, you'll see the 12 month lobbying summary. This is something that I have to continuously update on behalf of the client that I'm showing you today, which is Startup Canada. So on the 15th of each month, I need to go in there and add my communications around what I've been talking about with key government officials. So there's total transparency. It's great. This is a great source of information as well, because you can go in here and see, you know, who is lobbying on behalf of what organization and what the key subject matters are. So in my case, we're looking at budget, economic development, employment training, government procurement, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a little bit around, of information around the formality of who we lobby. Now, government relations. A lot of folks are not familiar with what GR actually means. And what government relations really means is it's a form of public relations. So it falls within the space of public relations and it focuses on building relationships with key government officials. Now, the intention of these relationships can change and sway based on the degree to which a company or an individual in our case wishes to formally engage elected officials. Now, there's three key uh, umbrellas that I operate within or under um, through NHM Connect, and that's soft, medium, and hard GR. So I'm going to go through a little bit just to set the stage in terms of what these different degrees of government relations look like. And I promise I'm going to be getting to why this matters for you, but I think it's important to really set the stage and help you understand the different degrees of government relations before we uh, go into uh, how all of you, the fantastic entrepreneurs on the uh, call today, can uh, use some of these skills to advocate on behalf of their small businesses. So soft government relations. This relates to engaging uh, government officials or representatives to attract partners, either for programs or events, really trying to use government uh, to showcase externally that you have that partnership, that you have that relationship with them. So this can be done through video messages. So for example, if you uh, have a big event coming up and you really want to show the external uh, population that you've got this partnership or this relationship with government, you can ask them to provide a video, uh, opening remarks. And really this is sort of focused in around political communication. So how are you cleverly communicating that you have at least a baseline relationship with a member of parliament, a minister, a parliamentary secretary. So you can see an example here. I had an opportunity to meet with the fantastic Jenna Suds, the parliamentary secretary. Um, and we talked about entrepreneurship, specifically the work that Startup Canada is doing to move the needle to better support entrepreneurs. So this to me falls under soft GR, very basic, introductory, really trying to showcase that you have that partnership. The next space, the next level um, of government relations is medium GR. So this is further building on your relationship and really trying to create trust uh, with these key members of parliament and government officials. So this can look like engagement opportunities, whether it be round tables, um, whether it be opportunities to be able to uh, showcase your education and your skill set around a particular topic. So this is really leading us into the point where you become an expert in your own field and government officials are going to listen to you when they're thinking about adopting policies or new programs. They know they have an expert in their realm 
that can provide feedback to better support them. Now, another interesting uh, tactic that you can use under sort of the medium GR space is that once you have a relationship um, with a key member of parliament, you can use them as your champions within the House of Commons. So for example, if you know your member of parliament quite well, you have that relationship in place, you've externally showed that you've got this sort of camaraderie building, they can then have the direct line to a minister, a parliamentary secretary, and they can essentially act like your pawns um, within the House of Commons to further your agenda or further enforce a particular topic that is of interest to you. So that's medium GR. The last uh, of the GR space, and that's hard GR. This is formal, hardcore lobbying. This is when you need to, as a lobbyist, register absolutely everything that you're doing in terms of the communication. This is really meant to uh, influence, change, maintain, or add policy as it relates to the cause or a need of an organization. So this is critical for an organization that is paying a lobbyist or a lobbyist firm to try to bring recommendations and move the needle on a particular topic that is of interest. This is very time consuming, and this really requires you monitoring the House of Commons schedule on a regular basis. You'll look and see how the different members of parliament are voting, what committees are going on, and really trying to be completely immersed in this space of government relations. Now, um, Following this presentation, we are going to share this, this deck with you. And the last slide of this deck, I've created a bunch of different helpful links that you can have in your toolkit. And one important link that you should monitor is the House of Commons calendar. So the House of Commons calendar is going to show you when key members of parliament are in Ottawa, meaning that they're here in Ottawa, or when they're in their riding. A suggestion that I have is that if you are going to engage with trying to meet with your member of parliament, do it when you know they're going to be in their riding. When they're in Ottawa, that's when they're officially working on all the different things within the House of Commons. And it's an important time for them to be able to work with their colleagues and their peers here on the Hill. Uh, another important piece that I'll mention is budget. Budget is probably like the candy store of um, uh, equivalent for, for, entre for uh, lobbyists. Um, so every year there's a federal budget and there's opportunities to be able to bring your perspective, bring your thought leadership, bring your lived experience to the consultations that bookend the budget. So there's pre-budget consultations, then there's um, a lot of formal bureaucracy that happens before a budget is actually tabled and goes into uh, the formal process. And so one of those uh, opportunities are testifying in front of the finance committee. So you can see here, uh, there's a photo of me testifying on the standing committee for finance. So I was speaking on behalf of entrepreneurs, on behalf of Startup Canada, sharing with key members of parliament within the finance committee my suggestions in terms of how the budget could do better to support entrepreneurs. This was two years ago. This is a very good example of hard GR. So those are the three different um, GR buckets that I play within. Um, and different lobbyists will have different objectives, but I like to sort of map it out like that. Soft, medium, hard, and you can understand the degree of communication and the degree of engagement that's involved. Um, some themes and subtopics to consider uh, within this GR space um, are advocating and connecting all ecosystem partners. So that's something that I do, really trying to reduce the silos that exist in the ecosystem um, between the private and public sector, uh, activities around the federal budget, which happens in the spring. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the, in the presentation. Looking for opportunities, so funding opportunities and identifying sources of funding, um, both through the formal application process. So we probably heard, I'm sure most of you have heard of different funding that's available, the Women Entrepreneurship Strategy, one in particular. It's a long process and you don't have time to be able to figure out if you're eligible, how you apply, who to talk to. So part of what I do work, uh, the work that I do is trying to simplify this process. There's enough red tape to begin with. It doesn't need to be so complicated. Um, or simple contracts. So looking for opportunities um, that uh, my partners have in the ecosystem and trying to bring government in to support them. So this is through informal contracts. And then looking for engagement opportunities um, for government officials based on their portfolios or how they vote in the House. So again, 
in this presentation, the last slide will be a series of different links. This will help you understand how to get to know your member of parliament. It'll give you buzzwords in terms of different topics that are of interest to them. This will be a great tool for you to use as you start to develop your own government relations strategy, or at the very least, decide that you do want to meet your member of parliament because you feel empowered that you actually do have a voice and you should have a voice to them. Uh, at least you'll have a little bit of background information on them. So when you do, do speak with them, you know a little bit more about them than um, they would think and you've done your research. Uh, additionally, some of the work that I do is awareness building. So bringing um, suggestions to government in terms of the work that my, my clients are doing and um, really trying to showcase what's available. So that's a little bit around the work that I do in the formal lobbying GR space. But guess what? You don't have to be a lobbyist to do all of that. This is very time consuming. You don't have time for that. So over the next little while, we're going to talk about the things that you can do and the things that will not occupy you nine to five, worrying about how members of parliament are voting in the house, how to communicate with them, how to do pre-budget consultations. We're going to simplify this for you. You need to understand that the, your voice matters. It absolutely 100% matters. And here's why. Electing MPs gives Canadians a voice in the affairs of our country and in holding the government account for its actions. When we vote, we tell our members of parliament what we're thinking. And when we ask questions, it only strengthens the system. So think about constructive feedback. It's strengthening the democratic system that we have in Canada. You know your business better than anybody else. You're an expert in your field. You have that lived experience. So you can authentically share your experiences to support with program development and to help the next roster of entrepreneurs that are coming through the works and just budding, just trying to better understand if they can take this, you know, this brave leap of faith into entrepreneurship, you can help pave the way. Members of parliament need to be informed on the top issues of their constituents and in the local ecosystem. That is why they are a member of parliament. They come to Ottawa to bring recommendations. They come to Ottawa to share feedback from their local ecosystems to try to create amendments or new programs or new policies to better the country. But their, their riding is their ecosystem. It's their file. In a way, you can think of it as their business. So they need to care. They need to know what's going on. And members of parliament need to be up to date on what concerns entrepreneurs. If we look at the state of affairs right now, there's so much pressure on entrepreneurs because we are the ones that are starting those businesses that are ultimately going to create jobs, that are ultimately going to support Canada's GDP. So the pressure is on, but we need government to support us to be able to want to create jobs and know that they've got our back. So they need to understand the important role that you play in being able to better understand how programs can be amended or created to support entrepreneurs. So it all starts with understanding who your member of parliament is. And in Canada, um, the way the House of Commons is built, there's 338 electoral districts, also known as ridings. Each one has a seat in the House of Commons. So last night, there was a by-election in a riding in Ontario. For a second there, there was 337 seats. And now, unfortunately, with the passing of Jim Carr, there's 337 seats. But typically, there's 338 because there are 338 ridings across Canada. Now, I would like to launch a quick poll, if we can, um, just to assess with those that are viewing today, how many of you know who your member of parliament is? A simple yes or no. So we'll launch that poll now and see what uh, what the results are. Okay, I'm seeing them percolate here. And it looks like it's a split 50-50. Wow, this is very telling. Okay, this is this is this is very interesting. Okay, so 50% of you know who your member of parliament is, and 50% of you don't. Great. Okay. Now, next question. For those of you who answered yes. Do you talk to them? So those of you that know who your member of parliament is, do you talk to them? Are you engaged with them? Do you speak with their office? Are they aware of who you are um, in the ecosystem? Okay, 60% of you do. All right. Okay. Thank you so much for everyone uh, for engaging there. Um, now, for those of you who do not, so the other 50%, um, those of you who do not know who your member of parliament is, 
do you know how to find out who it is? Who is my member of parliament? Just gonna take a quick sip of water here. Okay, this is this is really interesting. All of you, all of you know uh, who your member of parliament is, um, and uh, none of you do not. Okay, well, thank you for um, participating in that poll. We'll we'll close the poll down now. And um, we'll launch on to uh, our next uh, our next slide. Adelaide, I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. I close that. Okay, great. Um, let's see here. Okay. So those of you that uh, are super close to Innovation Guelph or connected with Innovation Innovation Guelph will know that Lloyd Longfield is your member of Parliament. A fantastic gentleman another wonderful uh, champion of entrepreneurs and uh, just, a, just a great guy. Um, now, for those of you, this I had included two links here on how you can find out who your member of parliament is. Um, and I'm sure, you know, based on those results, you already know how to find out who it is, but um, there's a simple tool on uh, ourcommons.ca members. You simply plug in your, um, your postal code and it'll tell you who your member of parliament is. If you also want to know who your uh, provincial uh, politician is, or even you know, municipally, um, you can go to ucount.ca and that gives you the full diagnostics in terms of who your elected officials are um, in, uh, in your riding. Now, for those of you that know who your member of parliament is, you're already talking with your member of parliament, you'll probably know that they have a constituency office in the, excuse me, in the riding, and then they also have a Hill office. Okay. Now, you may know who your member of parliament is, but I'm not entirely certain if the full breakdown in terms of what a member of parliament actually is, is clear. So we'll just quickly go through that. A member of parliament is a term typically used to describe an elected politician uh, in the House of Commons. So MPs make a difference by creating laws uh, and helping their constituents with problems. They work within the structure of parliament uh, and their parties to make decisions essentially in the interest of Canada. Part of their role is to meet with their constituents and to know what their constituents' needs are. And um, it's important for their offices to be aware of the issues that matter to their constituents. They almost act as the liaise, uh, helping their constituents with questions ranging from visas, pensions, benefits, income tax, really anything that's in the, uh, uh, in the interest uh, of the federal government. Members of Parliament and staff are good resources because they understand how federal departments are organized and where to find the answers. So I like to think of them almost as the Googles within the government space. Uh, instead of you spending hours trying to research and trying to find out where you can get intel, a member of Parliament or their staff can share this information with you and they have it at their fingertips. So we should be relying on members of parliament to give us the information that we need to give us extra hours in the day to work on our businesses and growing our, our, our companies. So to communicate with your member of parliament, um, it's really important to understand why you want to talk to your member of parliament and what to talk with them about and what not to talk with them about. So sometimes as simple, as silly as this sounds, sometimes a simple Google, you know, is this a federal issue or a provincial issue will help guide you. Like I said, today we're looking mainly at members of parliament, so we're looking at the federal landscape, but a lot of the teachings that I'll uh, hopefully be able to instill upon you uh, and the learnings, you can also apply to um, the work that you do with trying to communicate with your provincial uh, counterpart. So um, you would try to at least establish what the particular theme or topic is that you want to share with your member of parliament. Uh, now, be mindful that members of parliament, if you did want to mail them, um, you do not need to use postage. It's free. So you can write your letter, pop it in the mail, and not have to pay for a stamp. It's a little perk. Um, but I actually suggest emailing them. And I'll tell you why in a second. But in your communication with the email, make sure it's a, you know, a, a, a catchy uh, subject line, you know, why you want to speak with them. It could be local business opens in writing, um, you know, issue with, with business in writing something that at least they know what you want to talk to them about and be articulate uh, and direct in what you want to discuss with them. This will help demonstrate your knowledge on the topic 
And you want to be informative. You're coming into this as an expert. Don't diminish your ability in being able to hold your own with these members of parliament. You know your business better than anybody else. They rely on you and need you to understand what is going on in their local ecosystem. Your business and the benefit that your business provides to the ecosystem and the success of your business uh, is their business, and it should be. They should be championing you. Obviously, you want to be respectful and honest. Uh, Diplomacy 101, of course, but if you have an issue, you have every right to share it, but make sure you remain as diplomatic as you can. And you want to ask the member of parliament for their view on a subject. That's what they're there for. So, you know, if there's a new legislation coming through or if there's something that you are not understanding, they are there to answer your questions. So there will be occasions where it's appropriate um, to actually contact additional members of parliament. For example, when the chair of a parliamentary committee, there's over 20 of them uh, in the House of Commons, wishes to examine public opinion at a crucial point in that legislative process, um, or when you have a special expertise in a specific area and a parliamentary committee is developing policy, your communication with them can be important. So this links back to why at the very basic level of just soft GR, it's important for your member of parliament to know who you are and the role that you play within their riding because the time will come around where they are looking for experts. And it looks good if they can bring forward a champion um, of a particular cause that they're trying to champion that's within their riding. So it starts with really that relationship building at the baseline, knowing who your member of parliament is and communicating with them. Um, the other piece that I'll mention is emailing them. So a fun fact is that, and you probably know this, I, you know, I'm seeing that a lot of people are already engaged with their members of parliament here, which is great. And in the question and answer period, I'd love to probe a bit deeper and better understand um, for those of you that do know who it is and do know how to contact them, um, if it's because you don't have a need to talk to them, or why you are not communicating um, with them. And I'd love to learn a little bit more about that in a little while. But my suggestion would be um, to email them. And so a fun fact is if you look at their name, so joe.clark at parl.gc.ca, that's the main email that staffers monitor. They have to monitor that email. So if you look at, a, you're finding who your member of parliament is and you want to reach out to them, first.lastname at parl.gc.ca, that email is going directly into a staffer's inbox and it will be seen. So first you would request a meeting. So this is who I am. This is why I want to meet with you. They would communicate back with you. Then you would often have a Zoom meeting, maybe meet in person. Depends on the regulations still. Some offices wanting to meet in person. And then a meeting agenda is normally set. If you come prepared and actually share an agenda in advance, again, it shows that you're a business person. You want to get down to brass tacks and really get into the issue as to why you're reaching out to them. So quick introductions and then the issue at hand. Why it matters to the member of parliament and their constituents in Canada. That's the biggest piece is make that connection, why it matters to that member of parliament. So having that background information in terms of what their causes are that they care about, link it back, and then how this relates to the riding, so their community, and then as a whole, how this relates to um, and how it matters and why it matters to Canada as a whole. Then you're going to do some intel gathering. There's going to be some communication. What I always like to recommend when I'm uh, mentoring entrepreneurs that do want to speak with their government of, of government uh, representative, they just don't know how or why they should. Um, I always like to offer a suggestion in terms of a key takeaway. So you have the meeting, that's great, but then what next? A meeting just to have a sake of a meeting isn't worth it. You need to actually know that you're going to essentially build a relationship with them. So some tricks and tips that I like to give is, you know, if you have something coming up, that relates to your business that you'd like for them to participate in. Um, if you know, if you've done your research and you know that there is something that they're working on that you think you could offer value to, suggest keeping those lines of communication open and try to get a meeting on the books for, you know, you could say next quarter, let's follow up on this topic. Let's see how we can work together to really move the needle to benefit not just the constituents in your writing, but Canadians as a whole. And so that's a little bit of background on the communication piece. Um, so now we're going to get into why this all matters for entrepreneurs. Why should government relations matter for all of you? And to me, it boils down to five key reasons. Awareness, education, access, advocacy, and networking. These are all pieces that are important um, for entrepreneurs and small business holders and, and owners. And so we're going to look at those different topics. 
So the first piece is the two-way street of awareness. Um, not only is it important for you to be aware of what government is doing to support SMEs and entrepreneurs or the lack of support that they have for them, um, so you can benefit from new programs and policies, but it's also equally as important for government officials to know how they can help you. That is their role as a member of parliament. And sometimes I think members of parliament forget that. And so we need to remind them as entrepreneurs, we're tenacious, we're driven. We need to remind them that it's important for them to know what they can do for us. You are an important source of information for MPs and your feedback can shape and essentially inform how decisions are made in Ottawa. But this relies on that continuous communication with them. Again, a one, one meeting, one shot, fine, maybe you impress them, but you need to keep the communication going so they know you're a trusted resource in their riding, that they can get the information that they need, and it's that two-way street. MPs need to be made aware of the strengths and weaknesses of current programs so they can speak on behalf of you in Ottawa. It is okay to share that a policy or a new program isn't working and expose where there are deficiencies and gaps, especially for early stage entrepreneurs and founders. There's not enough support for them in, in government. And I've been doing a lot of work on trying to create um, more movement and more noise around there needs to be more support for incentivizing uh, very early stage entrepreneurs to continue to stay in this space. It's not easy. Um, and there needs to be more to support them. But I do hate that's a little bit of uh, my passion around entrepreneurs and what I do to try to support them through GR. Um, but the feedback can range in detail. So the mere fact that you may not even know what is available for you from government is useful because that means their communication is failing. They're not delivering information and they're falling short of what needs to be improved upon. So when you look at the budget that's tabled every year, there's tons of money, millions, hundreds of millions of dollars that's poured into different programs. But if that communication of those programs or policies that are being implemented are not getting into the hands and landing on the desks of entrepreneurs, small business owners, or whoever it may be that might benefit from these programs, what's the point? So they need to know how they can brush up their communication skills. And if that's as basic as it needs to be, that is very helpful because that's something that I'm continuously hearing is, oh, yeah, we're trying to work on our communication and making sure that it's easier for entrepreneurs or whoever it may be to benefit from a program. But forced by numbers here, people, we need to continue to tell them that there needs to be better ways to communicate this. So that is the two-way street of awareness at the baseline. The next piece is Education 101. So government officials are full of information and knowledge, and it's their job to communicate this to you. They are they have access to all of the information that is super difficult sometimes to find in a simple Google search or to spend hours determining, you know, one particular program, whether you're eligible, how to apply, who to talk to. Government officials have all that information in their back pocket, and they have staffers to support them to get that information if they don't have it. So often entrepreneurs have to budget for costs associated with coaches, mentors, advocacy support. That's partly why part of my business model is giving back, because entrepreneurs don't have extra money to spend on this. But this is important information that they need to know. Um, however, MPs can't charge you for their time. They're free. Our tax dollars are there to cover the cost of this. So we should take advantage of the role that they play within the ecosystem and use them to <clears throat> get the information on what matters to you. I almost like to think of members of parliament as the librarians in the GR library. So once you're aware of the programs that do exist for entrepreneurs, you can take this information into account as you grow and scale the company. But on the flip side, you can also use your role as an entrepreneur with that lived experience to educate the government official on what needs to occur to better support the entrepreneurial ecosystem and the deficiencies that exist. There are a lot of deficiencies still, and it's okay to say that there are because it's you can't change reality. There are deficiencies there. But again, forced by numbers, if they continuously hear this, then we can move the needle and try to get things a little bit more equalized for support for entrepreneurs, especially early stage. So this is how we entrepreneurs can create real change uh, for founders and the startup ecosystem as a whole. 
if we are all coming to them with the same concerns, they're going to stand up and take notice and realize, okay, maybe we need to change how we're formulating these things. And they're getting that education on how they can improve. And you are learning on, you know, what's available for you from that perspective. So moving on to the next pillar, and that is the layers of advocacy. So earlier in my remarks, I talked about soft, medium, and hard GR and really kind of spent some time talking about the hard GR, um, the formality of filing each month on the 15th if you're a formal lobbyist, and um, how it's very time consuming. But you don't have to be a lobbyist to be an advocate for what you care about. You can, as a concerned citizen, as a concerned entrepreneur for your business, for your budding business, for anything that has to do with what you are trying to accomplish in their riding, you can still advocate on your behalf. You can still advocate on behalf of the entrepreneurs in your riding and advocate on behalf of, you know, a consortium of, of different players in this space that have a vested interest in trying to um, create a space, a federal government that is supportive of entrepreneurs. And you're not being paid, so you're not a lobbyist. That's the big difference is that you, on behalf of yourself, on behalf of a group of entrepreneurs, you're not getting paid by anybody, so you don't have to formally do the um, the ins and outs of the, the lobbying process and apply uh, to become a lobbyist and then register. You can just bring your concerns straight to them. And so what's important here is that that grassroots level of sharing feedback with your member of parliament can be executed on a regular basis, but it can also be executed through the, the formal pre-budget consultation process. So every year we know the budget comes um, and in the spring is usually when the budget is announced. And in Ottawa, it's like the birthday of the, it, it's a very special occasion in Ottawa. I was trying to think of a fun analogy, but I failed there. Uh, hopefully you're laughing because I'm laughing at myself now. Um, but pre-budget consultations are before the budget is actually uh, announced. And so there's a call that's out, that's put out there and it's called Let's Talk Budget. You know, next year it'll be 2023, 2022. And there is a call for citizens to basically uh, share their feedback on what they want to see in the budget. And this is an opportunity for member, for entrepreneurs, um, for any citizen to either provide um, info through a questionnaire that's uh, available, um, or you can do a full formal pre-budget consultation. So I think it's around less than 2,000 words, and uh, there's a formality around it. But there is communication that's shared externally to citizens to be able to hear their voice um, and help them inform the budget process. But it's probably the last thing on your radar because you don't have the luxury of worrying about budget when you're trying to keep your company afloat. So this, again, the fact that you may not know that you actually can submit a full brief or questionnaire or even bring your concerns to your member of parliament and lead up to the budget is very telling. Now, I'm not making assumptions here, but I'd be curious in the Q&A portion to know how many of you uh, are aware of the fact that you can have a voice uh, and are encouraged to share your feedback in terms of how the budget is being created for the following year. So for those of you that maybe aren't even fully aware of what the budget is, it outlines the government's fiscal, social, economic policies and priorities um, like I said, it's usually uh, tabled in early in the year, February, March, uh, in advance of the fiscal year, which begins on April 1st. And Canadians are invited to participate and share their ideas uh, and comments with the Department of Finance via online consultations. Again, the last slide, there's going to be some links for you. Um, that information should hopefully help you in terms of bookmarking if you are interested in trying to further engage in this GR space. Um, I highly recommend that you bookmark uh, the Department of Finance and uh, that information will be there for you. And you too can be part of the indirect advocacy efforts of GR. Um, so with the budget, there's sort of three main categories. Uh, there's funding priorities, the renewal of sunsetting funding, and then funding to address programs uh, or specific issues. And like I said, you can complete the questionnaire or submit your ideas. Uh, often the government will hold virtual roundtables with diverse groups of people from a range of different regions, sectors, industry, um, also including those who continue to be deeply affected by the pandemic. 
So back to the advice that I gave earlier, at the bare minimum, if you play within that soft GR space, have that relationship with your member of parliament, prove to them that you are a trusted source of information, you know your business better than anybody else, you may be called into this space and actually be able to um, present your findings, your thoughts, your recommendations, your suggestions in terms of what the government can do better uh, and where you know you think maybe they are doing all right. So that's a little bit around the layers of advocacy. I know I'm speaking quite quickly and I'm trying to do this so we can get to the question and answer period, um, but I'm happy to answer any additional questions around budget and then the layers of advocacy later on uh, in the presentation. So the next piece is access, I call it all access pass. Um, once a relationship is established with your uh, member of parliament uh, or a key government official for that matter, and you have successfully communicated your concerns on a specific matter, you are essentially granted an access pass and indirectly part of the government relations arena. So almost think of it as a job interview. You know, you impress them in that first meeting that you have with them. They know, wow, this, this entrepreneur really knows their stuff. I think they could be a great resource for me and a great ally. You're in the system. You'll, you know, get on the preferred mailing list. You'll get invited to things. It's unbelievable once you sort of pass through that first, um, uh, that first phase of them trying to better understand you. It opens up a lot of doors. Uh, then they're going to start to request meetings with you and additional insights and feedback as they champion your mutual cause. So through your member of parliament, um, your voice will start to be heard. But again, it really rests in that first phase of getting to know them, proving your worth in the ecosystem, and then you've got this relationship that is just going to grow over time. It unlocks additional opportunities for you to be on the loop on new programs that are being developed. And I like to think of it, like I said, as an access pass to information without having to search for it. Again, opening up Google, trying to figure out what's available, it's, it's too time consuming. And so if you can rely on your member of parliament or their staffers to share that information with you, it's just another tool in your toolkit to be able to have the information that you need to see how different pro programs or resources or tools available with government can support you as you grow and scale up your business. Networking. As an entrepreneur, you know the power and the art of networking. I mean, this is, this is fundamental in entrepreneurship. You are your walking brand. You are the spokesperson. You're the CEO. You're sometimes the CFO, the solopreneurs. You're it all. And so you need to be out there. You need to be out there selling your company, selling your business, selling your brand. And you need that to be able to network. So being connected to your local member of parliament will unlock opportunities for you to attend community events, roundtables. Often you can be featured in their social media or newsletters. And if you think about their reach, all of the different constituents in their riding need to have mail out. So if you have a picture where you're speaking with a member of parliament, your name, your business, you're getting free advertisement just from simply building a relationship with your member of parliament. So your marketing and communication strategy can be strengthened by using government as a vehicle to spread your message and further build name recognition and essentially exposure in the ecosystem. So again, you want to strive to have your member of parliament become your champion, because once that foundation is built, once you've passed the test, so to speak, you and you have a relationship with them, um, they will be able to connect you with other like-minded government officials who can help further champion your cause. Because at the end of the day, we need to remember that they work for you. Now, I'd like to use Startup Canada as a case study um, for how I connect the dots for my clients. So as I had mentioned before, I'm also the Director of Government and Corporate Affairs at Startup Canada. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this fantastic organization. Really, it's the gateway to Canada's entrepreneurial ecosystem. Uh, there to support with community, tools, support, um, to ensure that very early stage entrepreneurs are connected to the right support mechanisms in the ecosystem. So on an annual basis, uh, through my work at Startup Canada, I get to work with over 120,000 entrepreneurs from right across the country and get to hear from them. So better understanding, you know, what entrepreneurship looks like on east on the east side of Canada versus the west or the north, the south, really trying to better understand what these ecosystems look like, where there's strengths, where there's weaknesses, what the government's doing or not doing, and then champion those causes to government and then come up with solutions in terms of how um, they can move the needle to better support entrepreneurs. 
So if, if any of you are not familiar with Startup Canada, I highly recommend that you get involved. Uh, the mission is so admirable. Really, it's trying to make Canada the best place in the world to start and operate a business. Uh, and a little shameless plug for government relations. We need both the private and public sector here to make that happen. So we need government to want to make Canada the best place in the world to operate and uh, scale and grow your business. So through Startup Canada, uh, I, I started a program uh, and the program is called Startup Gov. And really the whole modus operandi around the program is to give entrepreneurs a voice to government to create the conditions necessary uh, for entrepreneurial success in Canada. So three kind of key pillars within the program, get heard and connect, provide recommendations and then uh, learning insights. So through the get heard uh, and connect um, pillar, it's an opportunity for entrepreneurs that wouldn't otherwise know who their members of parliament are or just haven't had the opportunity to get to know them. Uh, we provide an opportunity for them to meet key government officials through virtual roundtables. So we'll assess specific important themes throughout the year, one of which is budget. So we, uh, an example that I can give is that we had a session with the parliamentary secretary. So just a quick, a quick second here, we have ministers they have a mandate letter throughout their tenure. They need to serve and need to fulfill their mandate letter provided by the prime minister. But then they have parliamentary secretaries that act just like secretaries. They are there to help support and enforce what the minister needs to do. So we do a lot of work with parliamentary secretaries. They're also great resources. So again, once you know your member of parliament, they can often connect you to the appropriate parliamentary secretary. And then you're building this network within government. Um, so through Startup Canada, like I said, we do a series of roundtables with parliamentary secretaries and entrepreneurs where information can be exchanged and entrepreneurs have an opportunity to share their advice, their recommendations, their thoughts and post questions to government. Government responds. We try to create that baseline connection point and then create opportunities for them to continue to engage with them. We also just completed a, a large event in Ottawa called Startup Day where entrepreneurs had the opportunity to sit on panels with government. Uh, so again, back to what I was saying earlier, something I've noticed throughout my tenure is that there are so many silos that exist in the ecosystem. Entrepreneurs are coming together, offering recommendations amongst one another, private sector is trying to come up with solutions, public sector, but they're not all connected. So part of what we're doing through Startup Government is trying to bring the three groups together so we can co-create those solutions and not waste any more time. Let's get down to brass tacks and really try to create programs, policies, services, tools, whatever it may be, to actually support entrepreneurs, especially early stage. Uh, as you can see, I'm very passionate about that. Now, providing their recommendations, again, part of the role that I play is trying to assess and understand where the key recommendations need to be, how we can create a more inclusive, supportive ecosystem for entrepreneurs to succeed. A lot of the work that I do with Startup Canada is in around pre-budget consultations um, and then budget, it's a big day, trying to see what's in there for government and then trying to get that information as quickly as I can to entrepreneurs or if there's large programs that are being announced with multi-million dollar, multi-hundreds of millions of dollars um, that have been promised for a specific cause, keeping the government to account and keeping them uh, aware of the fact that they need to fulfill their promise. So that's a little bit around the providing the recommendations and then learning insights. So entrepreneurs can also gain insight without having to Google uh, in terms of what programs are available to strengthen them uh, and how they can be part of different formal processes, whether it be the budget process uh, or just simply connecting with their member of parliament to understand um, the role they play within the ecosystem and how their member of parliament can support them. So my call to action today, um, I've said a lot, I've spoken as quickly as I could, but I think we need to just talk for a second about the call to action. There's a few different calls to action here. Number one, Meet your MP and build a relationship with their office. And I know based on the, the polling information, the 50-50 and then the 50 of you that do know your member of column that don't engage with them, I'd love to learn why you don't. Um, but for those of you, maybe there's some new attendees that join the call. Uh, if you don't know who your member of parliament is, please find them, reach out to them. If you already have met them, build a relationship by keeping them in the loop on the issues that matter to you and your business. Next call to action, engage your member of parliament publicly. So this is the soft GR. Invite your MP to events, engage them on social media. MPs have a lot of social media followers and if you can gain a shout out or a photo op, it will only increase your brand and awareness and it's free. 
Get involved in federal pre-budget cycle. So stay on top of the federal budget cycle and submit your recommendations. As I said before, submissions usually occur late in the summer um, with the budget being tabled in February or March. This is a great tool, a great way to sort of lean into the advocacy side of things with being able to succinctly share what you think the government needs to do more of, less of, or completely revamp their process to support SMEs uh, and entrepreneurs. Be vocal and have your voice heard. Share your concerns, recommendations, and feedback with government. Your voice absolutely matters in the creation of programs and policies. And that, quite frankly, is needed for entrepreneurial success in Canada. And last but not least, know your value. You are the expert in your business. You know it better than absolutely anybody else. And MPs need you. They can learn from you. And do not be intimidated. Your voice matters. They should be equally as intimidated by you because you know this better than anybody else. So those are my key calls to action for you. In summary, GR summary, your elected government representatives are there to listen and to help. It is their job to meet with you. Be relentless. If you, you know, you reach out to them and let's say you don't hear back, I don't know, in two weeks, send a follow-up. Continuously send a follow-up. I'm going to deviate here for a second because having a background in political science, I love political philosophy. And uh, Socrates is my favorite philosopher because he was a gadfly. And he continuously, you know, imposed critical thinking and kept questioning his opponents in terms of the why, what, how, when. It, you can be gadflies here. It is their job to meet with you. Be persistent. Be tenacious. Of course, be diplomatic. They're there, they, they are there to help you. So you don't want to bite the hand that could essentially feed you. Um, but follow up. Be tenacious. And they will eventually get back to you. They need you. They need you to be informed on the topics of their constituents. They're not doing their job if they go to Ottawa and not have um, a sightline into what is going on in their constituencies. Uh, so their writings, their DNA of their writings, you're part of their DNA and their writings. So you, by default, have an important role to play in their role of bringing their concerns of their constituents to Ottawa. They need you to be, um, they need you to be up to date on, you know, what concerns Canadians. If enough entrepreneurs, forced by numbers, like I said, uh, if enough entrepreneurs are coming with the same concerns, they're going to stand up and take notice. And that's when we're going to see movement in terms of what needs to be done to better support entrepreneurs. And know that you can influence policy and be part of the GR arena. As basic as it may sound, just engaging with your member of parliament, I hope I've showed you, can lead to lucrative outcomes. So at the end of the day, you do not need to be an expert at government relations to do government relations. For the 50% of you that have reached out to your member of parliament, you're well on your way. And my final sort of thoughts would be, you are an expert. You know your value. You have already embarked upon this brave journey of entrepreneurship. It's so incredibly admirable. And members of parliament need to learn more about what you are doing in their riding and how ultimately the benefit of Canada's economic well-being will rest in you. It is those entrepreneurs that are creating new businesses, which are creating jobs. They're, it's, it's you. It's quite frankly you that are going to help with the, the fiscal uh, situation that we're in right now and supporting Canada's GDP. So thank you so much. I know I speak quickly. Uh, I'm sure that uh, there's some questions, but uh, I will... Um, just again, say thank you so much for your time. I hope that I've inspired some of you to want to enter into this GR space and uh, I'll turn the uh, virtual screen uh, back over to Adelaide. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Natasha. Thank so you. as Natasha mentioned, now we do have some time for some question and answer. I would also like to welcome Shana Hamilton to the call. Uh, she is our program manager for the Circular Economy iHub here at Innovation Guelph, and we'll be supporting the question and answers. Um, as mentioned at the beginning, please do use that Q&A box uh, in your the banner of your Zoom screen. Um, think of some questions that you might have. But in the meantime, I will turn it over to Shauna as she does have a question to get us started. Thanks, Adelaide. And Natasha, your presentation was wonderful. Um, it's so nice to see those connections. Uh, I think a lot of us, as you said, are a little nervous to write to our MPs and, and not sure where that voice will land. So that's really helpful to, to hear your perspective on that. Um, the first question I have was, was given before the presentation, so I'm not sure if you touched on it, but um, what are the most effective lobbying techniques to help you win government contracts? 
Great question. It starts with relationship building. So if you can have a champion within the House of Commons, starting with your member of parliament and then working it up to understanding who the key minister would be um, that oversees that particular department or agency, um, and then use those key government officials um, as sources of information. So continuously connecting with them and trying to con trying to probe them um, in terms of trying to showcase the value that your particular company or the, the service that you want to provide to win this contract can do. I think having those champions within government that can reinforce what you're trying to say could only help. Um, but it really starts with networking as well. I mean, if you have a member of parliament that you know quite well and you let them know that you're thinking about perhaps applying uh, or winning a specific contract, they can often connect you to the right government official and you might even be connected to a bureaucrat. So now you're not looking at elected officials, you're looking at the bureaucrats that run the various departments or agencies. If they can connect you connect you to those individuals. They're not elected government officials. Um, so they would be able to create that connection for you without you necessarily having to search for that person um, or connect you to the right individual within government as a whole to um, be able to continue to reinforce the value add that you have. Like how, how are you competitively placing against others? Well, I think quite frankly, it starts with having that member of parliament or that government official um, trying to champion you within. And uh, it's like a job interview, right? The more people that can be your um, uh, references, think of them as references, the more references you have within government, uh, the more reinforcement that they'll have of you being the right uh, the right fit to win that particular contract. Hopefully that answered your question. I deviated a little bit. Yeah, no, that's excellent, Natasha. Um, just along a similar line, um, do you have any kind of techniques or um, strategies you would use for making that initial connection with the MP, um, you know, whether you write to them and, and kind of what specifically the content would look like in terms of trying to make that connection in the first place? Yeah, no, that's, a, that's a, another great question. I think it depends specifically on what you would like to talk to your member of parliament about. So let's pretend, let's just use a, a case study here. Um, you started your business pre-pandemic. Um, you have certainly struggled. You have not been eligible for any government funding. And you want to know what the government is going to do to ensure that you're stable and that you're not going to, you know, hopefully not have to close doors. Um, so in that case, what I would do is I'd write to the member of parliament and I would use something catchy in the subject line. So first I'd find out who my member of parliament was. Again, the trick is first name dot last name at parl.gc.ca. Um, and then I would write something catchy in the subject line, you know, um, local small business owner um, seeking support for, I don't know, looking for funding or something that will catch their eye in that subject line. But I think that, you know, because for this particular presentation, we're focusing on entrepreneurs and small business owners, I'd link it back to that. So they know going into it, okay, this is about a small business owner in my riding. This is about an entrepreneur. Um, this is about um, a company that needs support during this, this time. Then in the email, I would say who I was, I'd be very clear. You know, I'm writing to you on behalf of either myself and this is my company. This is what I do. A short summary. This is why I want to reach out to you. I want to reach out to you because unfortunately I've not been eligible for government funding. This is why it matters. I'm on the brink of either bankruptcy or I need funding, whatever it may be. And I'm looking for support. I'm looking for a champion to help me better understand how I can keep my business afloat. And then you could even throw in some numbers. Government loves numbers. So if you can somehow link in some sort of number, you know, the number of customers you've had, the number... Um, you know, what your revenue looks like, how far away you are from reaching your goals. If you can showcase that with actual, um, uh, you know, concrete quantitative data, that's also really appealing to them because they can use that in the House of Commons if there's actual accuracy. The other piece that I'll mention too is um, looking back to what I said before on this final slide, actually, I'm just going to show it to you here. Um, these helpful search engines they're really helpful because you can actually look and see um, information around the key member of parliament that you're talking to. Um, and so in some of these links here, I'm trying to see the one, is it Library of Parliament, Parli Parliamentarians website, um, all of these different links, if you if you search them a little bit more, sometimes keywords will pop up. So you'll know how a member of parliament is voting um, or you'll know about the issues that matter. So if you can link that back in your email, 
Um, you're almost calling them on what they're saying, right? So if a member of parliament is in the House of Commons and they say, I care about small business owners, and then a small business owner from their riding is writing to them, that would be awful if that got leaked to the media that they denied an email from a small business owner that is looking for support from a member of parliament who has publicly said that they want to support. So link it back to something they have said. Another tactic that you can use is, and we'll look at we'll look at entrepreneurship right now. So Minister Ng is the key minister um, that sort of holds this portfolio. Her parliamentary secretary um, is a fellow named uh, Arif Farani, actually going to be hosting him this Thursday with Startup Canada for one of our final sessions for uh, Startup Gov. Uh, it is a closed door roundtable, but for those of you interested in Startup Gov, uh, please let us know because we're always looking for new entrepreneurs to participate. But on that note, um, you could also look at the minister's mandate letter. And then in there, there'll be a full outline in terms of what that minister needs to accomplish like, during their mandate as the particular minister. So if you can link it back and say, as per ministering's mandate letter, um, X, Y, and Z are promised. I'm not seeing the return on investment. I'm not seeing how this is actually coming to fruition. Can you help guide me? Link it back to show that you know, to show them that you've done your research and you bet and you you know you have the background as opposed to just reaching out to say um, where can I find funding for a small business owner that they're not going to I mean they will answer you a staffer has to answer you but that's not going to get their attention so try to be clever um, with how you're communicating be succinct. Use numbers if you can. Once you've done that in the email, then you can say, I would, you know, I'm humbly requesting a short 20 minute Zoom meeting to better uh, help you understand the role that I play in the larger ecosystem and the role that I play in your writing. So again, linking it to their writing, linking it to the larger ecosystem. Those are some tips and tricks that I would use in terms of getting their attention. Usually it works if you link it in one of those different ways. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Natasha. That's fantastic advice. Um, and just on the startup gov, um, if we'd like to join, do we kind of just reach out, reach out to you or is there somewhere on the, the website we would apply? Yeah, so the best step in terms of um, Startup Canada, Startup Gov program, uh, if you, if any, if those of you that are already involved in some way, shape or form with Startup Canada, uh, the first step is, I would say, to reach out with the hello email. So if you go on the Startup Canada website uh, and you're looking to learn a little bit more about our programs, if you just email the hello account, then that will be um, funneled to me eventually uh, for the Startup Gov programming. And what's great is that we have had the chance to work with Mickey, and I hope she feels better. Hi, Mickey. Quick shout out to you. Um, through our Startup Gov programming, um, she sat in some of those roundtables. So to know that there's entrepreneurs out there that are interested in making those connection points and being involved, um, it's great to just have that roster of entrepreneurs available. And it starts with us just understanding um, your role in the ecosystem and what community you're connected to. And uh, we can go from there in terms of formal engagement uh, opportunities for next year. Okay, fabulous. Um, a question from our audience. In your opinion, what would the possibility be um, of patent application fees becoming free for Canadian citizens, as is the policy in the UK? I'm not sure if you know about that. Yeah, unfortunately, that's beyond my, I wish I could answer, uh, that's beyond my scope, but that is a question that you could ask your member of parliament, um, or you could um, look to just doing some additional research and figuring out exactly what minister that would fall within, um, minister's department that would fall within, and then um, what you can do is you can go on GEDS. So if you see here in the finding people slide that's up, there's a link for GEDS. This is essentially the government electronic directory service. So if you know that this would fall within Minister Ng's mandate and you want to find a connection and a contact in the minister's office. So this is beyond what we talked about today. I could do a whole presentation on this piece. Uh, maybe that's something I could do next year because it sounds like there might be some interest here. Um, but you would go in, the, in there. That's how you would find essentially the whole list of staff that work for uh, Minister Ng, um, if that was the relevant minister, and then you would reach out the same way. So, you know, I'm so-and-so, I'm looking for more information on this piece, can you direct me accordingly? Um, but again, if you don't, you know, have time to do that, because that can take a little bit more time, member of parliament probably be able to connect you, a staffer probably could connect that if it's a basic question. So I'm sorry, I don't know enough about that particular topic uh, to be able to even assess what is going to be happening on that piece um, that's not a particular uh, topic or subject that I uh, I lobby on but a great question to to put forward 
Mm, certainly. Um, and just out of interest, I know you mentioned the access pass. So um, upon speaking with your MPs, you can kind of get this, this extra access to government, which is really exciting. Um, is this specifically for business owners or was this something we could kind of recommend to anybody? Anybody. Absolutely. You know, this, this presentation was more, um, I, I tried to tweak it a little bit. So it was focused on entrepreneurs, startups, uh, SMEs, but that applies to anybody. I mean, there's so many different files out there um, and so many different individuals um, that have such wonderful uh, lived experience to be able to share with government that the access pass sort of um, uh, metaphor applies to anybody, really. Um, I've used that, that tactic um, a lot for sort of the startup entrepreneur space, um, but also some of the work that I do on youth empowerment, uh, again, trying to um, get your member of parliament excited uh, and aware of the work that's being done by a specific company as it relates to X, Y, or Z cause, get them excited. And then it, it, again, it opens up those doors and opportunities for you. It's, it's so exciting when it happens. Uh, and it happened actually just two weeks ago. There was a, um, a gentleman that I was mentoring um, and uh, it made sense to connect him with the minister's office. And so often when you are engaging with ministerial offices, you will talk with either a chief of staff. That's, that's, that's not as common. Usually it's a policy individual um, because they know the policies. They're the ones that are recommending how these policies can be adopted, changed, or implemented. And so created those connections um, for this fellow to connect with the uh, policy advisor. I was in on the meeting, you know, gave him an overview in terms of these are the talking points. This is how you go through it. He executed flawlessly. And I said, okay, remember when we're done, you need to have a key takeaway. What's next? Like you're not going to let them get off the hook this easily and say that they're going to get back to you when you're not entirely certain if they will. You want to have a follow-up. Well, it was fantastic because the policy advisor actually recommended the follow-up and said, I'd like to connect with you in about a month's time. I'd like to add you to our stakeholder list. Your value in this, in this space and your knowledge or thought leadership is exactly what we're looking for. And we often hold roundtables. So to see this all come together in the 20 minutes that we kind of carved out for this particular entrepreneur um, to share his advice and his, he was presenting his business idea to, um, this, this office, it was just such a wonderful thing to see it all come together. So it does happen. This is not just fluff. I'm being completely genuine and honest when I say it can work. And that's probably the most relevant uh, case study and very fresh. It was just two weeks ago. So it's fun. Yeah, I think you've given us kind of the inspiration we, we were lacking. So that's really great. I think we're all going to look into how we can get more involved with, with our governments. And um, just on my own um side of things. I know I know we have a lot of um, people who are interested in government grants and funding, and it is a really popular topic of kind of where to search for these. Um, I know, like you said, meeting with your MP and people who can directly inform you is really helpful. And these links here are great too, because I know it can be kind of hard to navigate all the different links sometimes. Um, is yeah. there any kind of um, specific funding kind of portal that you would recommend at all? Yeah. Absolutely. So I said is a big um, is a is a big department within government. Um, and within there, there's something called the Business Benefits Finder. Um, so if you Google Business Benefits Finder, that will take you to a page where you can actually put in and plug in the information. So, you know, you are in such and such a location. You are this type of entrepreneur, this type of Canadian. So, you know, you're in life sciences, you're in uh, tech, whatever it may be. You, you put in the information and then what you're looking for, and then it will generate different opportunities that you may want to look at. The next step of that is that clicking uh, and then going and sort of doing your research in terms of what is available through these different uh, outputs that come from when you input your information. But the Business Benefits Finder definitely is a tool that the government um, has implemented because they recognize that it's just so complex. How the heck do I find what is available for me um, without this being a full-time job or hiring somebody to do this on a full-time basis. So that would be the best tool um, that I would, I would recommend, especially for business owners uh, or entrepreneurs. The other piece, and I know this is daunting, but um, the, the budget, and I know I talked a lot about the budget, but I'm telling you there's, there's so much that can be done in this space. Um, there's the pre-budget consultations, like I said, and then the budgets comes forward, you know, it's presented in the House of Commons, then it gets implemented. Once it's public information, what I always like to do is once the budget is available, um, 
to be able to read. Now, often lobbyists get to go into pre-budget lockup, meaning we get access to the budget before everybody else, but we have to consent to not being able to share it. But once it's public, um, the best thing is if you have a key topic, a key theme, a key subject that you're really needing support with, this is basic now, this is not just for entrepreneurs, and you open this massive document, you know, over 300 pages, and you quickly just do a control F or what is it, control to search work. Um, that'll take you to the pages where there's different shout outs or different opportunities for support under those pieces. The next step, so once you found, okay, look, there's something here. So a great example, budget 2021. Some of the work that I did with one of my clients was um, recognizing, having the government recognize and understand that there's not enough support for national organizations that support entrepreneurs to be able to receive funding to help them with their national initiatives. It's very piecemeal. You have to go to one various department, apply for funding, or look at regional development offices, which are spread across the country. And then you're, you know, you're, you're, it's preferential treatment, right? So if you get funding for FedDev, it's Southern Ontario. If you get one for uh, the prairies, it's for the prairies. Um, so this new fund was created and it's called the Entrepreneurship and Development Program. It was $101 million promised through ISED. Uh, and this is meant to support national organizations that support underrepresented entrepreneurs and to also support underrepresented founders and entrepreneurs that need additional support to be able to start and grow their businesses. Now, this was in 2021, and this is something that uh, Minister Ng's office knows that I continuously communicate with them on. Can you share any more information? We're still waiting. But an example like that was I just the budget was released. I looked through. I saw entrepreneurship. I saw startup. And I was like, okay, this is the area that we need to focus on. And so, at, you know, simple tools like that can save you having to read a massive document. But that is one program that you're going to hear a lot more about next year, uh, whether it be through Startup Canada, sharing information, because part of our role that we play in the ecosystem is sharing that information as well, trying to make sure that entrepreneurs have access to these resources, these links, these tools. We want to do the research for you so we can save time to actually focus on your businesses and growing them. Um, but the the program... The announcement of this program was announced in Budget 21, um, so it's time for them to pull up their socks and, you know, talk about what this is going to look like. That's something that I'm sure a lot of you participating today um, will either benefit from or at least have a vested interest in. And that's an example of just doing a little bit of research outside of going on the Business Benefits Finder, looking at the budget. Another thing, too, is that some of the large PR firms that are out there, um, there's a ton of them in Ottawa. There's a bunch they often will provide their synopsis and their recap of the budget based on their clients' needs. So that's also a great tool is to get involved and even get on their mailing list because they'll do a summary. You don't have to read it. And you can just read their summary and not have to read this 300, 400 page document. And they will outline what's there, what's not there. Another great, another great resource is um, the work that CFIB does. So they are very um, vocal. They are huge champions of small business owners. Uh, and um, the work that Dan Kelly does is fantastic. So I also recommend following him on social media or somehow learning a little bit more about what they do because they share a lot of information. And again, saving you time, being able to tap into the work that's already done, the resources that are already there. So you can simply click that link and have the information that you need as opposed to spending hours finding out what that link is. It's been vetted by trusted organizations such as Startup Canada. That's fantastic. Thanks, Natasha. I'm sure that's very helpful for everybody. And uh, we'll look out for that new fund. Um, seeing some interest already, so that's exciting. Um, I don't have any further questions. So unless anyone's frantically typing out their last thoughts, I will turn it over to Adelaide to, to close us out. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you, Shauna. I'm just going to quickly share my screen here. All right, so I just wanted to extend another thank you to Natasha. Um, if anyone on the call today would like to uh, be connected with her, please feel free to send me an email. I'm just popping my email into the chat here um, and happy to make an introduction. Before you all disappear, I would also just like to pop a very brief feedback form into the chat. Uh, please click on that to share your thoughts with us on today's session uh, on the toolkit. Tuesday series in general. If there's a topic that you would like to, us to present on, this is a great opportunity to let us know. 
Please feel free to follow us on social media, tweet or post about your experience with us today. By the end of this week, you will get an email from me with a copy of Natasha's slides as well as a recording so you will have access to all of the information, resources and links that Natasha shared with us today. Again, a sincere thank you to Natasha, uh, to our SLEO interpreters, Anna and Kelly, to our sponsors, to Shauna and of course to all of you. Thank you so much for being with us here today. Have a wonderful afternoon and we hope that you'll come back soon. Take care, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you.